This has probably happened to you every couple months or so. You look up from what you're doing, otherwise occupied feeding the dog or paying your power bill, and you look up, and they'll be trying once again to make Roseanne Barr be quiet. Shut up, Roseanne Barr! You're a Nazi! You're crazy! It's not working. Roseanne Barr has been in the public eye for almost 40 years, and amazingly, she's more influential than ever. So we thought we would check in with her and see how she's doing. Roseanne Barr, how are you? I'm great, Tucker. How are you? Well, you're obviously unbowed. <laughs> I can't remember where I was the other day, and someone was like, Roseanne Barr's a Nazi. She's an anti-Semite. I'm thinking, you can probably criticize her. Probably not a Nazi or an anti-Semite. Probably not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> so, so they canceled, famously, they canceled the resurgence of your show, the mm -hmm. relaunch of your show. Just like you, when it was number one. Hey, how come they, why did they, how, don't their shareholders wonder why they would do that? I don't know how that spooky finance stuff works. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got some questions, I will say that. But did you figure out, like I did, that it's really personal? Oh, oh it's always personal. Yeah. The thing about television is everything's personal yes, on TV. It is. Yeah, yeah, it's about you. Yeah. So that's great when everyone's like, oh, you're Jesus. But it's not so good when they're like, you're fired. Yeah. <laughs> I don't take any of it personally, thank uh -huh. heaven. But you get fired in this very, very public way, become the center of the national debate over Trump, but you don't go away. And then all of a sudden look up and you're everywhere. How did that happen? Uh, uh, I don't know how it happened. I really don't. <laughs> Did you expect to be doing this at this stage of your life? No. I, uh, no. Well, I guess when I was really little, I, I saw myself doing something that was going to be, have good consequences to it. And, uh, so anyways, this week I was like, hey, this is like when you were little and now you're doing it. It was one of those minutes where you go, thank you, God, because... Yes. I do feel like God puts me where he wants me. I mean, I'll tell you all that later, but no, so I, I go like, hey, I'm a lady citizen journalist for my old age. Hell, that's great. That it's is. great because, you know, I love that. Uh, oh, no, I can't remember her name. But that one that used to interview everybody in the 50s, she had her own show and she did the greatest interviews. And I'm so stupid. I can't remember her name. Jake, check that lady out. My son. Lady in the 50s who yeah. used to interview she people. Had, she had a great interview show. Anyway, but I like being a citizen journalist. Like, you know, like, you know, like you're a real journalist, you know, but you're also a writer, which astounds me because we never see that anywhere. I mean, you are such a great writer. Well, so I, I want to talk to you about that. And I look forward <laughs> to doing that. But you are such a great writer because... I have so much to say. I want to say it like this. Let me think. I, I'm a deeply religious Jew, which is why they call me a Nazi and an anti-Semite, um, and a racist. Yeah, well, of yeah. course. And a transphobe and a whatever, a, a Zionist baby killer. They call me everything. And before that, when I was on the left, the right used to, but they're the same, I guess. It's all the same people. Well, they're playing noticed. different parts. They just call me a cow, a whole, you know, uh, you know, destroying the American dream, uh, man hater. You know, they're always throwing stuff at me, and none of it was ever true. But I had to live through the, all that gauntlet of hate since I first showed up. Sorry, you haven't answered your question. It's Arlene Francis. No, not Arlene. She was good though. Barbara Walters. Not Barbara Walters. I knew her. She was she good though with Anwar Sadat, really wasn't she? Man. No, no, she was a. Kind of an ugly little woman with brown hair. Okay, so an ugly little Damn woman it. with brown hair. Faye Emerson? No. Wendy Berry? No. Check Chase. Google ugly little woman with brown hair, <laughs> 1950s. Gr the greatest interview. May Brussels. Thank you, God. May Brussels. Mm -hmm. Was this on Salt Lake City stations? Yeah, my dad used to watch it. Okay. And and he'd say, uh, this, this woman has integrity. You know, my dad used to decode media for me yes because he wanted to be a comedian so he always showed me how comedy works and you know anyway oh my god i can't even focus my mind but anyway <laughs> so, so you said you're a deeply religious jew y yeah and since i was three years old i wrote it in my third book called rose anarchy i've 
had a conversation going with God. I wrote it in my book. Uh, you know how little kids have an imaginary friend? Yes. Well, mine was God. It's well, kind of weird. You chose wisely. Yeah, because that's all we studied. It was an Orthodox Jewish family. And uh, <clears throat> so that was my friend. And I talked to him when I would read and study. I wanted to know everything about it, you know, and I would talk to him. And he'd always answer this in my book. I said, how come you, you could solve every problem on earth? All you got to do is just wiggle your little finger and you could stop all these problems. Why can't you do that? You, all you have to do is wiggle your finger. Because I was a suffering child. Yes. And he said to me, because I don't have fingers, Roseanne, huh. but you do. And he said, and you should be very proud of that opposable thumb that I put on that hand of yours, because now you can really get busy helping a lot of people and trying to, to make things right. And he always gave me the answer that I knew God would give me. He didn't ever go, yeah, go get them. Yeah, they're wrong in their religion. He didn't never say none of that. So I knew it was him, you know. So he told me all the time, go over here and do this and go over there and do that. Just trust me on this. And I, I did that my whole life, with the exception of the few marriages that really <laughs> effed me up. But then I got rid of those guys and continued on the path I was supposed to go on. You Did know? you not ask for guidance on the marriages? Uh, you know, I didn't listen. Yeah, It wasn't God's fault. Yeah, yeah, he told me, but I go, I'm putting you on hold. Yeah. I got some physical business that you don't know want to know about. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he knew? Well, yeah. 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 But it wasn't anything. I was married, so it wasn't anything bad. Right. I mean, except for that it was horrible sex, which, you know, people should not have sex. That's one way that we can fix the world right now. Does people stop having sex? Yes, absolutely. That's a tough one. It's harder I than know. like quitting smoking or something. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're married and you can take care of the kids that are going to be a result of it. Yes. Right? Isn't well, that common sense? I strongly agree. And we have journalists such as yourself with a conscience who care about this country and what it means and how we have to do everything we can to save it at yes. this late, late date. Late date. For all of us, hello, Yes. and stop buying in the bullshit. You know, I said that it, to introduce the POTUS, the deep state bullshit. Well, actually, it's funny you mentioned that. We have that clip. Really? Yes. Oh. Roseanne Barr, this is your life. Here you are. Aren't we all fed up with the deep state bullshit? <laughs> and the bullshit <laughs> we want Trump the Magador to kill that goddamn bull and the bullshit kill that goddamn bull okay now I just put the political analysis on hold for two seconds. You're obviously enjoying that immensely. Oh, it was so fun. <laughs> it was so awesome. To, you know, it's always fun to make people laugh and, you know, come alive. So I think even if, like, you didn't like Trump and you weren't going to vote for Trump, you'd look at that and be like, that looks like a pretty good time. Oh, no, I wouldn't do it if I... Well, oh, of course. I don't mean you, Trump. but, like, how could anyone wa doing that watch that? You're wearing a him. cowboy hat, yeah, screaming I obscenities. Yeah, I off a guy. <laughs> you did? And they didn't have the mic, so I had to stand on my tiptoes, which, you know, I could barely reach the mic. But, uh, yeah, I swiped this hat off a guy. And, uh, you know, I didn't like how my hair looked. Don't you like how my hair... You know, I cut my own hair with toenail clippers. It took me four days. <laughs> But I cut it hair by hair because I was so sick of it. But yeah, in the I mirror? had a yeah, of course in the mirror. I'm not crazy. Did anyone see you do it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Good. I was in a room by myself. <laughs> but uh no, but I, I loved it and I had spent a lovely week down there at Mar-a-Lago. It was so awesome and I 
I just loved it. What do you think of Trump the guy? You know him, obviously. What yeah, do you think little, of him? Well, as I always say, he's the only guy in my Hollywood career that ever returned a favor. He's the only one who ever returned a favor and gave me back more than I had given him. I think he has such integrity. I think he's like me a lot. He t he says he tries to be funny, and he is really funny. Yeah, he the is. The guy's really funny. He's got great timing, and I I I, I laugh. So you know him. We a all long laugh. Time. I mean, we all think he's funny. What what favor did he return? Well, you know, I did. I I was doing my. I think it was my second or third HBO. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. The internet is crowded with interesting things that don't really matter. On TCN, we attempt to bring you interesting things that actually do matter, and a lot of them. Interviews, long form and short, videos, documentaries. You can find all of it on TuckerCarlson.com, and we hope you will. Free speech is bigger than any one person or any one organization. Societies are defined by what they will not permit. What we're watching is the total inversion of virtue. 